when I first started thinking about activism, I it feels like I've thought about that for a really long time. Um, and um, and it's been more a matter of throughout the years is trying to decide um, in what ways you know can I can I be active in what ways can I um, work with this issue or that issue or help with this or help with that. Um, um, gosh, you know it started when I was in high school, um, and um, and then going to college and then. Um, about to leave college, um, it started with things like, um, well, this was the late 60s, right? And early 70s. So a lot, a lot of things were going on at that time. But the areas um, that I tended to focus in on um, um, when I became much more active uh, uh, had to do with women's reproductive right issues, um, which led to um, the career I started, um, and also Pan-Asian American organizing. Um, so that goes back to the early 70s. Um, and I've, you know, been involved in different things in different ways uh, throughout the years. But um, especially with Taiko, uh, you know, learning um, and playing Taiko. And I've, I'm still kind of a newbie because um, even though I'm old, <laughs> Um, I've only been playing for 12 years, and um, um, but the longer that I've played and the longer that I've met, the more people that I've met in the community, um, you know, I've I've I found myself thinking pretty early on about you know how can Taiko be used um, in ways where it's a real voice. Um, Yeah, so when I started playing Taiko, which was <laughs> in my later years, <laughs> because I I wanted to play Taiko for, oh gosh, so many, many, many years. I saw my first performance when I was about in my mid-20s, and um, I went, wow, uh, because I had never seen um, something that represented Japanese culture and art form that I could relate to. Um, and, um, um, and it was loud and it was strong and it, it was powerful, but it took me, oh gosh, um, I didn't start playing until I was in my late, late fifties. So, um, and so that's kind of what perked my interest in Taiko from the very beginning was, um, um, how different it was from the typical stereotypes that we as Asian Americans and women in particular um, were, were dealing with. Um, is I never fit in those stereotypes and I, I, I didn't like them, I hated them. Um, but anyway, um, so when I learned how to play Taiko and throughout the years since, um, over the last um, 12 years that I've been a player, um, you know, it was that initial impetus around identity that um, got me interested in it. Um, so that's always been part, a big part of playing Taiko for me. And I've really enjoyed learning and I've enjoyed playing, but I found myself um, continually thinking about, you know, how can we use Taiko and Taiko's voice in another way? Um, not you know, just based on performances, but, you know, how can we use it as part of activism? Um, I guess is how I would label it now. Um, and so that's what I've been working on. Still figuring that out. Have done some things, but still figuring it out. Yeah. Especially as I get older and it's getting harder to play. <laughs> it's been, it's been, amazing it's been scary it's been overwhelming it's been oh gosh so many things um and there are a couple friends that i had brief talks with recently about you know when when the pandemic started and then um um you know the black lives movement and then you throw on top of that um 
just the you know incredible disparity that a pandemic brings out in terms of how our society is structured um all that just all you know going on at the same time and um i realized that oh you know i felt like i was back in the 60s uh in terms of the intensity of things and um um so it it's it took a while it's taking a while i think to get grounded again but things keep on happening so whatever sense of groundness we have gets stirred up all over again over and over again over the last um half year um um but it's been um you know talking being part of the taiko community in terms of some of the you know the forums that we've had um has been really really um interesting and helpful because um i think um you know using taiko or using what we experience in taiko as you know some of the base by which we um choose to become more active um uh is a good way to look at it um yeah so you know i think like everyone else you know um you know we're trying to figure out well how how do i what do i do how do i engage with this you know how do i not just sit back and watch the whole thing unfold um and i think you know that's what a lot of us are trying to figure out right now because you know it's it's it it's um can't do it in the same way that you know um i mean you can but uh given that a lot of us who are older are in a higher risk age group. We can't do it in the same way that we did when we were in our 20s, for example. And um um so refiguring, you know, all of that out. Um yeah. Right. Well, I think, you know, what we're doing right now, you know, in terms of the um um imagine forums is a good step um because we you know people need an opportunity to um reflect to learn and to reflect and to figure out um you know it, it, it's i think it really is a time for introspection um and um um because otherwise you're just jumping into things without really knowing what your base is um uh, which i think um you know happens all the time but um but i think that if we take the time to really look at ourselves and um learn about the history um learn about how asian american history um in my case is japanese american history too plays into um all that's going on and there is a lot of interplay um uh in terms of general um you know ideas around racism um then you know then we're more likely to see something solid happening you know in the future um and i think that one of the things that's different is um uh this time than back in the 60s is that uh it seems to me that people are doing a much deeper dive into this understanding and reflection um and i think that's really good um you know in terms of how people or i decide um or what i've been doing in terms of um taking any action on this one of the things that i've been thinking about <laughs> um is one of the differences uh for me um 40 years later is um trying to be a little bit more kind and patient with myself um um just that you know i'm in a in a very different place than i was when i was in my 20s um but also knowing that um you know it it really is important to be grounded um when you make decisions around what your activism will be um so that you don't flash and burn out um which is i think you know the potential for a lot of people 
and what happens with movements sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think about it in terms of um, the other way that I've been thinking about it, which is different than um, the 60s, was um, I think about, I've been thinking a lot about compassion and what does that mean? You know, being a Buddhist, and you have that background too, you know that that's a word of uh, uh, thinking that's, you know, part of Buddhism. Um, and it's interpreted many different ways. Um, and to me, um, you know, I look at compassion as um, not just being compassionate or the feeling of compassion, but I think of compassion as a verb. So, you know, you can have a lot of empathy, you can have a lot of sympathy, but um, how does that translate to compassion, which to me is a more active expression of all that. 